Okay, so a market research firm believes a new color scheme for a client's website causes a change in the time spent reading the site. So a change in the time. It doesn't look like they say it's going to increase it or decrease it. So they're trying to test to see if there's just a difference. Okay, so that means our alternative hypothesis is that the mean of the differences, you know, if you subtract the old color scheme by the new color scheme, they're testing to see if it's just different from zero. It's either less than zero or maybe greater than zero because they said difference. If that had said the new color scheme, uh, that the old color scheme was less than the new color scheme, then you expect 15 minus 6, you expect the old color scheme minus the new color scheme to be negative. So we'd say less than or equal to something. Okay, And then like always, the null hypothesis is the opposite. Okay, so I think we've got to... Got to calculate a test statistic, and you'll, this will look familiar. The test statistic for um, the mean, for differences, for the mean difference, is the mean of the differences column, in which I'll show you how to calculate in just a second, divided by the standard deviation of the differences over the square root of n. So it's kind of like um, the test statistic for a sample mean, okay? St same kind of standard error down there. Uh, they're going to make us calculate standard deviation, yeah. Yeah, they are. Okay, so to find this test statistic, we've got to first find the mean differences. Okay, and so to do that, all you have to do is take uh, the old color scheme and subtract it by the new color scheme. So I'm going to make a column called D. 15 minus 16 makes negative 1. 20 minus 22 makes negative 2. 17 minus 19 makes negative 2. 16 minus 21 makes negative 5. 38 minus 43 makes another negative 5, and then 29 minus 39 makes negative 10. So we just have to add up these columns. Okay, negative 1 plus negative 2 plus another negative 2 plus negative 5 plus negative 5 plus negative 10. The uh, total of the column is negative 25. And so the mean difference, d bar, is just when you, uh, when you add them up like we just did and then divide by how many you have. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So negative, oh man, I wish they could have made it come out nicer. Negative 4.16 repeating. So that's what goes up here for d bar. Now we need to divide that by the standard deviation of this column. Uh, so I'm going to use a standard deviation calculator online. You could use Excel. That's pretty quick too. Actually, that may be faster. Let's pull up this program numbers. This is just like Excel on a Mac. Um, so to calculate the standard deviation, I'm going to put each number in this column. Negative 1, negative 2. I was doing something else earlier. There we go. Got negative 2, negative 5, negative 5, and negative 10. <laughs> so all you have to do, like in Excel, or you could do this in Google Sheets, because that's free and available online. Uh, just have to type equals in an empty cell. STDEV dot S. Oops. Because we want the sample standard deviation. SDDEV. Oh. Okay, yeah, this is SDDEV uh, P, the population standard deviation. So I guess in numbers, I'm used to working in Excel, but in numbers it doesn't say dot S to reassure you that that's the sample standard deviation. Okay, the standard deviation of those is. 3.3116. And you can get that from any standard deviation calculator online. It doesn't necessarily have to be done with that program. It doesn't have to be done with Excel. You can just Google a sample standard deviation calculator. Uh, and then uh, N is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. N is 6, okay? You wouldn't say 12. I know there's 12 numbers here, but it's the number of pairs. So watch out for that. So negative 4.16 divided by... I'm going to do the square root of 6 first. And then we've got 3.3116 3 divided by the square root of 6. So the bottom is 1.35196. So we divide those two. We get negative 3.08 when we round to the nearest hundredth. Oops. Okay. 
So next, they're probably going to ask for p-value. Yeah, so the degrees of freedom uh, is nice and simple. It's the number of pairs, okay? Remember, um, n stands for the number of pairs. So the degrees of freedom is just n minus 1. Uh, so that's 5. Okay, so that means we're going to be using this row. And just like before, find out where your test statistic lands. And it's the absolute value of the test statistic. Negative, uh, uh oh, uh, here's degrees of freedom of 5. Negative 4.16 falls outside this range. Wait a second, why did it mark that last one right? Oh, I was looking at this, negative 4.16. Sorry, our test statistic was um, negative 3.08. So, here, let's look again. Here's the degrees of freedom of 5, negative 3.08. The absolute value is 3.08. So that falls between these two numbers. Just make sure to write them least to greatest. 0 0.01 is less than the p-value, which is less than 0 0.025. And now, watch out. Um, think about your alternative hypothesis. You've got to double these. You've got to double the area of your p-value. If, um, if it's a two-side hypothesis test like ours is. Okay, so p-value is somewhere between 0 0.01 and 0 0.005. So to double that, I think we've got to, it's a tough one, I think we've got to divide each one by 2. Right, that should increase the area, because if you just multiply it by 2, So if it was like a planal number, doubling it would be easy. You just multiply this by 2. Like, let's say the p-value was 0 0.02. You just multiply this by 2. So yeah, I guess you got to multiply this by 2 and this by 2 to keep the compound inequality the same. So 0 0.01 times 2 and 0 0.025, we said was the, uh, 0 0.01 times 2, and then 0 0.025, 0 0.05. So just watch out for that. you got to... Oh, did I type that? Yeah, I did. Okay, you got to double the area of the p-value if it's a two-side hypothesis test. And then the conclusion, the p-value is somewhere between these two numbers. Our significance level is 0 0.10, so our p-value is below our significance level. That means we reject the null hypothesis. There is sufficient evidence.